And in life, we see somebody that is amazing at something or some particular activity. And instead of having that same mentality, like, oh, look how cool this person is and look what they've done. And if I keep working on it, maybe I can get to that point. Instead, we come up with an excuse like, oh, it must be nice to be that person. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top podcast, where it's all about learning from the best and most inspiring minds in the sport. So together, we can train a smarter, healthier, and faster running community. Now, here's your host, Tina Muir. Hello, this is Tina Muir. Thank you so much for joining me for the latest episode of the Run to the Top podcast brought to you by Runners Connect. Last week, we talked to one of the best female ultra runners in the world, Ellie Greenwood. She was fun-loving and honest, sharing the ups and many downs that come with being an ultra runner. Today, my goal is to have you finish this episode with confidence, believing you can do anything you put your mind to, even if it means doing it behind your alter ego. Steve Cam is the founder of Nerd Fitness and the author of his book, Level Up Your Life. He has helped thousands of people all over the world to change their lifestyles for good. And no, not through fad dieting. And actually, in fact, he he hates dieting. But he shares just how you can make sure you stick to those changes you keep promising yourself. And not through a quote that works for a few days, then loses its power. He gives real, actionable, helpful tips for all of us. Steve has one of the most creative and, well, brilliant minds of the fitness industry. Everyone can pick up a few tips and tricks. And so after a word from our sponsor, Jabra, we will get right to it. Multiple studies have proven running with music helps to improve performance. I have become addicted to my Jabra Pulse Sport headphones, using them for almost every easy run, but shh, don't tell my coach. You will love these earbuds too, and you can enter to win a free set every month by visiting jabra.com forward slash runners connect. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast, Steve. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I am excited to have you, um, someone who is very well known within the fitness industry. Uh, you've been mentioned multiple times across the many different articles. But before we begin to talk about your business, can you share a quick summary of who Steve Cam is, maybe your fitness journey or whatever you'd like to kind of share with us? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> my, my a journey is, question. <laughs> my journey is long and varied and full of mistakes and and comical adventures and uh, <laughs> yeah, adventures. Um, adventurous, I guess, is the the best word I could put for it. Um, in in the shortest term or the shortest explanation, uh, my name is Steve. I'm a huge nerd and I like to be fit. Oh. <laughs> um, my journey started in high school, and actually my freshman year of high school, I ran cross country, believe it or not. Oh. And uh, it really wasn't until my junior year of high school, though, I ended up getting cut from the basketball team and uh, signed up for a gym membership. And and as a very skinny, weak individual, uh, that was the beginning of my my journey to kind of improving myself and, and building some confidence and muscle strength, et cetera. And I just fell in love with this idea of making myself a little bit better every day. And through the rest of high school and all of college, I made every stake imaginable trying every workout and and uh, not eating properly and eventually <laughs> kind of cracked the code and realizing, oh, you have to eat well and exercise in a way that's fun to you. And when you combine those things, you're actually going to have success. So mm-hmm. that was the the impetus and the kind of origin of me uh, beginning and coming up with this idea to help people like myself, fellow nerds, uh, get fit and <laughs> the birth of uh, nerd fitness and nerdfitness.com. Well, you went straight into my next question. So that's nice and easy. Although you did uh, kind of uh, answer the next one I had, which was where the name came from, which you've obviously <laughs> already answered there. So for people who may not have heard of nerd fitness, can you kind of explain what exactly it is and what makes it different to other fitness websites? Sure. It's funny. Like I, now being kind of nerdy is is in, like <laughs> yeah. you know, and thanks to the success of Marvel and Star Wars and uh, superhero movies, like being fit and being nerdy is is in. Like we, it was even like a trend on Fox Business like a few months ago. It was like the in trend in gyms is or nerdy stuff is like being nerdy and fit. I was like, ah, oh, crap, we're trendy. <laughs> you know, when, when when I started this eight years ago, nine years ago, I guess when I first bought the domain, uh, it wasn't like a it wasn't a business strategy necessarily. Mm-hmm. It was just like, hey, I'm this is these are my people and this is the language I want to speak in. And you know, I'm I'm still new to this health and fitness stuff, really from a teaching perspective. 
But I know there are people out there that don't want to make the same mistakes that I've made and that need a lot of help and probably would never go to bodybuilding.com. They would never go to, they're you know, a little too self-conscious to go to a gym. And they're just like, I just want actual information that is not, you know, a veiled advertisement for a supplement or an ab machine <laughs> or something. And, uh, that was, that was kind of the beginning of it. And it's, it's since evolved from just me and writing some blog posts to now this worldwide community of, uh, of people of all walks of life, men, women, young, old, divorced, married, kids, no kids, uh, that tend to work desk jobs or have some sort of nerdy pursuit. <laughs> and they're also interested in getting fit. So uh, I think the thing that makes nerd fitness different is that it's a, I like to think it's the most supportive community on the internet when it comes to getting people healthy. And we're also like unabashedly nerdy. Like that's who we are. And we celebrate and embrace the things that other people might think we're weird for. So it's, mm-hmm. you get to be, you get to be hundred percent yourself. If you want to talk about deadlifting or running your first 5k and also debating whether, you know, which, uh, if star Wars is better than, than Lord of the Rings or star Trek versus star Wars. So it's, uh, it's a pretty unique group of people. Let me tell you. <laughs> so I want to ask more about that in a second, but just a side note. So you said, um, you started about eight, nine years ago. When did the first superhero Superhero, superhero movie come out. Were you the uh, maybe you were the inspiration there? Maybe <laughs> maybe somehow, you know. I actually uh, created. This is really random. People aren't going to care. But when I was uh, fourteen, I created a little woodwork in my woodwork class, a little woodwork phone where you could see the other person. So in a way, I invented the iPhone. But <laughs> so maybe that was you taking on the superhero. Thank, thank you for that, by the way. Uh, I, I use your invention every day. So I know. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I know. Do not, oh, sorry, that was way too random. I apologize for that. Uh, random um, random is, is the name of the game for me, so I appreciate it. <laughs> no, that's great. Okay, and then um, so you you said you created this community and, you know, um, nerdy people, which runners are definite nerds. Um, we are a very, definitely a strange crowd and have uh, interest in numbers that most people think are crazy. So you're definitely talking to the right kind of group here. So let's take that one step further. One of the things you have on your website, which I thought was really cool, is about your epic quest of awesome so will you tell the listeners about what that is exactly and how the idea came about sure as somebody that was raised on a nintendo entertainment system and and spent far too much of my youth escaping into video games and books and movies and wishing i was james bond or jason (laughs) Bourne or captain america Mm -hmm. batman whatever it may be i spent a, a majority of my life kind of escaping into these characters and as I started to improve myself, improve myself from a physical perspective, I started to think of like, man, I spent all this time playing all these games and, and spending more and more time kind of diving deeper into these movies and, and books. What is it about them that makes me addicted to those things? And how can I apply those same mechanics to my, to my real life? Mm-hmm. And you know, I I realized I kind of narrowed it down to a few specific principles, but one of them being this idea of the progress principle. And it's used to perfection in video games. It's used to perfection um, if you're somebody that, you know, uh, really enjoys putting together a puzzle or uh, solving a a complex logic puzzle and then moving on to one that's just a little bit more difficult. We love to make progress Mm -hmm. as, as a species. We love to see ourselves do, you know, take an action and see that we're now better off even a tiny little bit than we were before which is essentially what makes a video game a lot, uh, far more compelling than it would have been if there was no uh, no system in there to show you, hey, look, you're getting a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool, instead of living vicariously through another character, uh, why don't I start living you know, vicariously through myself to, to quote the, guy, the most interesting man in the world from the <laughs> Dos Equis commercials. Yeah. I wanted to live vicariously through myself. So I started looking at life as if it were a video game or a a movie. And I happened to be the hero that was, that was in that movie. (laughs) And I broke down, I kind of took my, I, the concept of a bucket list and gamified it. I turned it into a series of quests and missions that I had to complete that challenged me in any number of ways, be it a, a physical goal, a musical goal, language learning goal, travel goal, uh, volunteering or philanthropy goal, a business goal, uh, anything like that. And then I assigned experience point values to those goals. And, uh, and then as I started crossing these things off of my list, uh, I actually leveled up my character, me, 
uh, gained levels and experiences, and and I got to do some pretty cool things. It uh, and and ended up actually with me traveling around the world for all of 2011 and half of 2012, and and to this day I'm still crossing things off of it and and getting closer and closer to uh, leveling up in the game of life. I like mm-hmm. to say. No, that's awesome. So yeah, I and I love that that's become like your phrase, and um, you know, it's 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 a great thing to think about, especially as um, it's you know so easy for us to kind of uh, look at others' end result. You know, other people. I know runners are guilty of this, but everyone is guilty of this. You know, especially with Facebook and seeing all these positive things that it's hard not to you know see the end goal as unattainable because you don't see the little like you said the little progressions people make sure. along the way so um you know it's easier to keep on top of if you kind of focus more on your own journey so uh have you found that other people have kind of been able to follow along with this or has this been something that um over time you've had to kind of convince people to live their own journey you know i think i think people resonated with it immediately mm-hmm. you know I, th- I think especially in in the nerd fitness community you know and just uh, you know I continually go back to the video game analogy and, and very similar to what you were just saying in a game if you're level one and you see some guy riding around on an epic you know horse and and like a flame wielding sword and he's killing dragons you're like oh man this game is amazing I cannot wait until I get to that level so mm-hmm. I can do that cool stuff and in life, we see somebody that is amazing at something or some particular activity. And instead of having that same mentality, like, oh, look how cool this person is and look what they've done. And if I keep working on it, maybe I can get to that point. Instead, we come up with an excuse like, oh, it must be nice to be that person mm-hmm. and have person per- perfect genetics. Or, you know, they either make an excuse or we get down on ourselves and say like, oh, God, I've been working on this thing and look how much further they had they are. I'm never going to get there. And you don't realize like how long those people have been playing or working on that skill or working on that goal. If you're running your first 5K and it takes you an hour and you have to walk and whatever it may be, it could be discouraging if you see somebody that just ran it in, you know, 18 minutes or something and you're like, oh, what the, you know, that's that's not fair. Or Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, look, if I keep working on this, maybe I can get to that point. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you know, taking that mentality, taking that mental model and realizing like, oh yeah, like life, life can be analyzed through that same lens. Uh, looking at Steve and his journey, I still get plenty of people like, oh, it must be nice to do whatever. And I'm like, I'm just a normal mm-hmm. guy that enjoys sitting on the couch and playing video games like anybody else. I just put a system in place that makes these things more likely to happen than not happen. And I've been doing it for six or seven years now. And uh, it's, I've been able to encourage and share and, and come up with some really fun examples to show other people and actually end up writing a book about it called Level Up Your Life. Yep. And in that book, I share a bunch of stories of other people that have gamified their lives as well from, you know, just as the nerd fitness community is widespread and people from all walks of life, so too are the stories throughout the book to mm-hmm. show that you don't have to be me. You can be anybody. You just need to put the right systems in the right places and apply those, you know, kind of mechanics to to your life to actually start pulling these things off and having these great adventures too. And did you kind of show in the book, which we're going to talk about a bit more in a minute, did, did you show, you know, how you had been through all these struggles and, you know, you started at square one and um, like this is how you've grown so people could see that, you know, you didn't just jump to where you are now? Yeah, I, and I, I try to paint that picture as much as possible, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it's why every great story, everybody loves the underdog story, the origin story. Nobody wants to hear about like the guy that was awesome that got more awesome or the woman (laughs) that was really good at everything and then got even better at it. Like that's not exciting or relatable. I think everybody wants to hear like, oh, look, this is where this person came from and what they were able to accomplish. Uh, You know, I was a skinny, risk averse, picky eating, shy nerd that most of the things on my list scare the hell out of me. <laughs> like to do them scares me and that's why I know I need to do them. So, you know, I, I share the background of, of me and I share the background of all these other members of the community of where they came from and how they became, how they like, kind of created this alter ego superhero version of themselves. Mo- one, to inspire, but two, I think to kind of remove that excuse that everybody might have. Mm-hmm. I think I think we're very likely, many people are anyway, likely to say, oh, it must be nice, uh, but I don't have those same opportunities or I don't have those same genetics or I don't have this. 
And then, you know, I'm hoping through the book and the, the experiences and the excuses, like I kind of like shatter every excuse throughout the book. It's like, oh, you are a single dad and you work, you know, 60 hours a week. Here's a story of a guy, of a single dad <laughs> who works 60 hours a week, who trains in martial arts on the weekend with his son so that they can both bond and exercise together. <laughs> or here's a woman that ran her first uh, 10K or marathon after training. So, you know, whatever it is, like... I, I want to share those experiences for everybody. So when they, if somebody says to me, oh, well, I, that doesn't work for me because I'm not you, it's like, okay, well, maybe one of these other 20 examples mm -hmm. of people from any possible scenario, maybe they do line up with you and make you realize like, oh, wait a second, like instead of using excuse to be like, oh, I do have that ability. And if I do put these systems in place and start small and slowly build up and slowly work on things, I too can get to to where they are and have that success or find that health or happiness that you're looking for. Absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. I actually have a lot of experience with that. Um, as a elite runner myself, people think, oh, you know, must be nice and easy for you to just jump nice, along. Right? And I'm, and I'm like, no, no, no. So actually through my blog, um, I share all the, all the downs and talk about how much I struggle and how hard it is. And, you know, I really like speak from the heart and I think that's been good similar similar thing a lot of people see like oh well maybe you aren't a machine so right. um it's kind of cool but so then what would be your best advice well firstly i guess i'll say um i will put links to the book in the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash rc106 um but so what would be your advice for someone um if they kind of you know we're doing really well with their fit their own fitness journey their own leveling up of their life but then they kind of fell off for a few days or you know they had a had a bad patch where maybe some stuff came up or something sure. how do you encourage them to kind of get back on get back in the game and keep working at it uh i, I think the biggest <laughs> fallacy that exists in especially in the online space is the, uh, an over an over reliance on motivation and inspiration and people are like, oh, I just wish I was more motivated to exercise today. Or I wish I was just, I wish I was motivated to eat healthier. And I just, I'm not ready yet. And I need to wait for, I need to wait for things to be right. Or I need to wait for that stroke of genius or that stroke of inspiration to come in and be like, oh, today is the day I'm going to change. And <laughs> it, uh, it's, motivation is fleeting. And uh, although I think motivation can be very helpful, especially to start, um, building systems and putting discipline, essentially manufactured discipline in place in your life is what's going to get you to do the things you actually want to do. If I only exercise when I was motivated to exercise, it wouldn't happen. Like <laughs> if I only wrote blog posts when I was motivated to write blog posts, uh, I wouldn't have a company right now. I had to put systems and accountability and checks and balances in place. I had to manufacture my environment to make it easier than ever for me to exercise. So let's take any, somebody wants to, somebody's building a running habit and they want to run every day and they ran, they started on January 1st and mm -hmm. come January 14th, they got sick for a few days and they lost all that motivation. And here they are, you know, months later and they're like, ah, I had that goal to run every day and what the heck happened? I think a problem most people come up with is they, they're either too vague with their goal where it's I'm going to run every day or I'm going to exercise more and it's not quantifiable so you can't check a box that has that little dopamine mm -hmm. release in your brain that says, look, you checked a box, you mm -hmm. progressed, you made your improvement. Like, like in any game, you have, you have moved closer to the next level. Um, so I, I think you need to be very specific in what your goal is. I think two people, when they are motivated, they bite off way more than they can chew. They're like, I'm going to go run 10 miles a day. And like, they haven't run at all ever. So, you know, they get through maybe the first day and after their first day, they are beat up and exhausted and they hate running and they hate everything. And they just want to curl into a ball. So instead, like if somebody's like, I'm going to build a running habit for 30 days, what I would say is, okay, great. I'm, you're going to set your alarm. And you're going to wake up 10 minutes earlier than you normally do. You are going to put your alarm clock across the room. You're <laughs> going to sleep in your running clothes. You're going to put your shoes by your alarm clock next to a glass of water. And uh, you're going to, you can either do something like you can, you have to check in with a friend after your run, or you can schedule an embarrassing tweet that's going to go out in the morning <laughs> unless you get up and actually turn it off. Something that makes it not reliant on you and your motivation and your brain, which will rationalize anything. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's dark. Oh, it's my uh, dog's birthday. It's whatever to get you to not do the thing you, you want to do. So now you're getting up 10 minutes earlier, you're going across the room, you're putting your shoes on, you're already dressed. Mm. Uh, you go outside and you go for a 
10 minute run slash walk or five minutes. I don't care. Whatever it is, it's got to be so small that you're able to complete it, check it off, and it's the first thing you get done in the day. If you can do this for 30 days straight, then you earn a trip to a, let's say, a you know, exercise, a fitness conference or running conference, or you get a new pair of running shoes or yeah. a new running shirt, something that motivates you even further down this path. So in all of these scenarios that I just presented, the thing you're not doing is waiting until you're motivated to exercise. Mm-hmm. You're putting a system in place and making the default activity I get out of bed. I'm already dressed. If I don't go for this run, my friends will hold me accountable and make fun of me. If I do, and I do this for 30 days, I earn this reward that rewards me back. And all of these things consistently over time, again, start very small, helps reinforce this kind of new identity that you're building. Like I run every day. This is Mm -hmm. what I do. And look, I've proved it to myself now 30 days in a row that I can do it. Um, And then another rule that I absolutely uh, abide by and and encourage other people to as well is the never miss two in a row rule. If you miss one day, it's not, you know, things happen. Yeah. Your kid might get sick. You have to go to, you have to go to an extra class or traveling, whatever it may be. If you miss one day, it's not the end of the world. That second day is now the most important day of your entire li- of your entire life. That exercise is the most important workout you've ever done. I don't care what you have to do. Drag yourself. Have somebody drag you. Whatever it may be, never miss two days in a row. Because if you miss one, it's not. It's it's a slight speed bump as you're building this momentum. But man, as soon as you miss two, it makes it so much easier to fall off mm-hmm. the wagon. So. And- even yeah. if it's like a, a de- even if it's like a you know ten fifteen minute thing, it oh, whatever. Like just something, yep, absolutely. yeah, absolutely something that re- reminds you that you are doing this thing, to, so you don't lose that momentum. You know, inertia is when whether you're full steam ahead and kicking ass, and you've been going for sixty days and everything just clicking, mm-hmm. or you're brand new and you can't seem to get yourself to move. Inertia is so so powerful. And once you finally get yourself moving, all it takes is two days off mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it just slows you right down and mm-hmm. getting back started again is, is feels, feels monumental. So never miss two in a row, hack your environment, build systems around you and don't rely on motivation because it's going to wear off in two weeks. And you're going to wonder at, in December, what the heck happened to all that things, all those things that I scheduled back in January. Mm-hmm. Fantastic advice. That really, really helps. And actually, I've been finding the first one you talked about helpful myself. Um, I promised um, my husband that I do my breathing exercises, which I'm not very good at. So every day I I have three alarms go off. The first (laughs) one says, you promised. Um, And then (laughs) the second one says, are you going to lie to Steve? And then the third one says, are you prepared to be a liar? So like each time, I like it. I like guilt myself if I don't do it and it's Perfect. worked. I've done it. It, so, it works, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So um, I'm going to dive into level up your life a bit more. But first I have to comment all your images online where you have your, your revealing of your Superman costume. Um, you know, I, I just thought it was really cool that you had, um, well, firstly, why you decided to go with it. But secondly, I think you're wearing New Balance shoes, um, which is kind of cool seeing you with like your suit. And then I'm you've got like the sport, balance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sport <laughs> shoes. And OK, so maybe that was intentional. That was one of my questions. Um, but kind of tell us a bit more about how that kind of came up with it. Was it just you wanted to go all in with the superhero theme? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I used to dress up like Superman as a little kid, mm-hmm. like consistently. It wasn't even like Halloween. It would just be like a random Tuesday in March. Be like, I'm gonna be Superman today. My parents were like, uh, all right. <laughs> just like I'd like sit on the floor and watch uh watch Christopher Reeve as, as Superman. Uh so as I started to develop the idea for nerd fitness and the nerd fitness logo, you know, which is which is circular and, and on a chest, very similar to to Superman. It just it made so much sense to me, and I love the idea of thinking of superheroes. Like, what if they actually existed in real life? And if they did, how would they how would they interact? What would they do? So, for for some of the um, publicity for you know for the book and promotional stuff, it's I wanted I wanted people to like realize like just like you know, Superman is a mild mannered reporter during the day Mm -hmm. and Indiana Jones is an archeology span professor when he's not traveling around the globe. Like you don't, it's not like you have to be like this world traveling entrepreneur that runs your own company. You can have a regular job and have regular responsibilities. Like superheroes have those responsibilities too. Mm -hmm. And your favorite characters do. And that's what makes them relatable. So I wanted to, 
share that mentality and that thought process that like you're going to you're going to have kids you're going to have uh you're going to be in relationships friends you have bills to pay whatever it is like you have the things that you need to do and you do them well but there can also be this other part of you that does amazing things whether mm-hmm. it's traveling uh volunteering learning a musical instrument learning how to dance um uh, whatever whatever it is you have this part of you that is different that gets it's kind of like the version of you that you've always wanted to be yeah. And I think it's that's uh, it was it, it just lended itself so well to the book. And what's funny is like this book cover, you know, it's very similar. It's got the the you know a yeah. character reveal opening his shirt and revealing level up your life on the shirt underneath his suit. And I've done the Superman thing so many times, and I had this book cover, and I looked at it for months and months and months. And it wasn't until a friend of mine was doing like a periscope talking about the book and he held it up in front of him. And he's like, oh, look, if you hold it up like this, it looks like you're the character doing the thing. Ah. And then like everybody started posting photos of this and like dogs and cats, like, like holding the book, (laughs) owners holding their their books up in front of their animals, their babies and things like that. And I was like, I, I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And also like, here I am, I'm the creative guy. I, like went out of my way to come up with a, a cover that I was really proud of. And it's got this built-in kind of viral element to it. And I mm-hmm. never once thought of it until a friend of mine did. So kind of like hit myself in the head and be like, you idiot. But the other part of it is like, all right, that's really freaking cool. Yeah, and It's fun for me to see people sharing photos of themselves, kind of mm-hmm. striking that Superman pose, holding the book up in front of them. Yeah. And anyone who buys the book now, uh, you should definitely uh, do that. And what's the best way to send it to you? Is it a Twitter <laughs> Yeah, no, you find me on uh, um, Instagram or Instagram. Twitter. I'm at Steve Cam, S T E V E K A M B. All right, uh, perfect. Tag me in either one of those, and and I'll I'll see it, and I'll get a real big kick out of it. <laughs> All right, make sure you guys do that, and I'll have to do that as well. Um, so then, yeah, you kind of talk about living through your own alter ego. We've been talking about that this whole time, which, like you said, I think it's really cool. You know, becoming your own superhero, um, and you know that stops that whole comparison trap that we were talking about earlier. So. Do you want to explain maybe just a little bit more about how people can take this into their lives and becoming their own, you know, like you said, their own superhero? Let's talk about the um, creator character on your website, which is sure. pretty cool. I did create one and I, her name was Rockina because nice. I love the Rocky movies. And so I figured I'd make a girl version. Rock, Rockina the warrior. So um, oh, that perfect. was mine. <laughs> So do you want to kind of explain what that is for people who want to maybe have a go with that and have some fun with this? Well, so for years, I I did like the Dungeons and Dragons equivalent of turning myself into a character. Like I just I made, made like a spreadsheet and came up with uh, experience point values and tracked it by hand, really. And when I developed this, when I wrote this book, I, I wanted people to be able to create their own characters and I wanted to automate the process as much as possible. So now if you go to levelupyourlife.com or um, nerdfitness.com, you can create your own character, come up with your character's name. Uh, you can write your character's backstory slash origin story, uh, which is you know kind of like what makes you who you are and why is your superhero the superhero that you are. You can pick what class you want to be. And I base this on like fun kind of video game fantasy archetypes. I would imagine the majority of people that are listening to this podcast would probably be in the scouts guild. <laughs> so we have different groups like warriors are tend to be power lifters. I'm like a, I'm an assassin because I do mostly gymnastics and parkour type stuff in my training. Um, scouts are the runners, bikers, um, you know, triathletes, marathon runners, et cetera, fit into the, the scout category. And then you can create different categories and your quest list and, and, and assign experience point values to them. So you can literally level up your character (laughs) as you are completing things that inspire you, challenge you, scare you. Um, you know, you you sign 20 points. If you run your first 5k, you sign a hundred points. If you run your first marathon, whatever it may be, like you can come up with this really fun point system that can show you that progress that will get you hooked and addicted on this idea of improving Mm -hmm. yourself and turning yourself into a character and, making this life that we live in the uh, the enjoyable game that we're playing. No, oh, I, I love it. And I really, I thought it was really cool. And, um, you know, although one of the things uh, that it came up with for me um, was that I had to visit a foreign country in July. But I was going to ask you right here, right now, um, I did go to Australia for my honeymoon in December. So I was wondering oh, if I can have a free pass because <laughs> I went all the way across the world last uh, December and 
our funds are a little low, as you'd imagine. So sure. could I say a new state instead? Is that am I allowed yeah, I, to? I think, I think a new state or come okay. up with a, a <laughs> make it be an adventure in your own hometown. Ah, you know, like, uh, I think in the book, I equate it to the one of my favorite movies from the 80s, The Goonies, mm -hmm. and how these kids find a, uh, a treasure map and, mm -hmm. and find this amazing adventure in their backyard. Um, I, I have no problem with you coming up, but it's got to be a deliberate activity okay. that right. you've chosen that you've chosen to do. Uh, and I don't think I said this, but the whole character stuff is 100% free. Like, yeah. there's no, yep. you don't have to buy the book. Like, you can no. just go to level up your life. I realize that's not a, I'm not a good marketing myself where he's like, oh, you just go do the fun. But like, I would rather people, you know, come yeah. up with fun, uh, learn about the character stuff. And if you want to learn even more, then you can check the book out and yeah. uh, learn kind of the backstory behind why the things are the way that they are. Absolutely. And so why do you think travel is so important? Um, you know, I, I love that you talked about in your own story about the Great Barrier Reef. And that's one of the things I did do in Australia, which was the highlight for sure. sure. Um, but what it, what is it you think about travel is that is so important? I don't, it just gave me such a different perspective on life. Um, as somebody that had never traveled outside of North America until I was 26, I remember my first trip. And, and uh, I think a, a lot of people have these preconceived notions about whether traveling is dangerous or traveling is expensive or whatever it may be. And I remember I, I was I was terrified, but I went with a friend of mine. We went down to Peru to explore Machu Picchu. And sure enough, you know, you go to the travel dot whatever gov, <laughs> US travel dot gov or whatever, whatever the, the US travel website is. And there's like an advisory warning, like dangerous to travel to Peru. And I'm like, oh, man. And then I looked and realized that like they have that danger warning for like literally every <laughs> country that you're traveling to. <laughs> And I'm in my head, I had traveled in the past, but it was always to like, you know, a resort here in the, U in the US, like go to Disney World as a, as a kid. And like, you just have this mentality of like, oh, things are expensive and kind of like static and pretty and white. And like, it's like this thing. So I get to Peru and I'm traveling with my friend and we're staying in like nice hostels for $5 a night, eating amazing meals for three and $4, uh, exploring Machu Picchu. And everybody I encountered couldn't have been nicer and mm -hmm. more helpful. And, uh, I don't think I ever felt uns the only time I felt unsafe is when I was mountain biking down uh, like ancient ruins and like with the <laughs> cactuses on one side. And like, I was like, all right, this was probably a little bit too advanced for me. So I ended up like getting off the bike and walking down. But other than that, mm -hmm. I had an amazing experience. I'm sitting there as the clouds part at 7 a.m., uh, sun sun comes up over the over the Andes Mountains, and I'm looking at Machu Picchu, and I feel like Indiana Jones exploring these ruins for the <laughs> first time. You know, and then you take a bus, and there's 30 people on it, and you're having con interesting conversations with people, and you return home, and you know, it's every great story in history follows this similar story arc called the hero's journey, and it's this kind of cyclical experience in which a, a hero goes out and identifies, you know, finds a mentor and has these challenges and overcomes obstacles and maybe an internal struggle that he or she has struggled with. And they return home a changed person. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this adventure for me was that hero's journey. Like I came home and suddenly like the things that used to bother me didn't. And the things that my friends were complaining about or that I people were fake outraged out about fake outraged over on the internet or whatever it may be First like, world problems none of this stuff <laughs> freaking matters yeah. like what are you guys complete good lord like get out and and like realize that we're not the we're not the center of the universe and there are amazing experiences to be had and it can be done very cheaply which is why i made sure you know for me uh, traveling uh, it, throughout the book i i, I kind of share some words of wisdom of somebody that was initially terrified to travel, had some amazing, life-changing, inexpensive experiences around the world. And, you know, I shared kind of those tactics and tips for people that are um, interested in, in taking their first adventure outside of the country and what they should think about and what they should deal with and kind of shatter that perspective that they probably have thanks to thanks to the news and and newspapers and and even our government you know telling people like it's dangerous don't go anywhere <laughs> stay here forever and like mm -hmm. understanding like you have to leave your hobbit hole and you have to go explore if you're gonna have those um those great experiences and yeah. i realized like, you know you just said you know you went around the world to australia um Many people, maybe maybe funds are really tight, and they but driving to the next state mm -hmm. or having that experience in their home city and doing something that is deliberate and 
a perspective shifting experience, I think is very important for people to have to realize like, again, we're not at the center of the universe. Uh, the problems that we all think we have that are so important don't actually matter. And uh, those experiences we can have, I think can just be very, very life changing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love, I love that. Everything about that. And I think runners, especially um, people listening that can, that's so easy to do. There's races all over the world. You know, there's, uh, you know, everywhere you could think of, there's there's going to be a race, and it doesn't have to be you know some kind of scary country if you if this is your first time traveling outside of the US. But um, you know, there's races all over the place, so that, what a perfect opportunity to try it out. Sure. Um, okay, so let's go a little bit more into the fitness side of things. On as we as your website is Nerd Fitness. So, what kind of uh, for people listening, what kind of exercises are we talking about here? Um, this is obviously a running podcast, but sure. most of our listeners are open to new ideas. And we've kind of talked about the um, benefits of cross training, especially in our cross training episode, which I'll put a link to in the show notes. But what what about what exercises or what fitness activities specifically do you kind of uh, focus on? Sure. Well, uh, the nerd fitness philosophy kind of revolves around three things. One, understanding that your diet is 80 to 90 percent of the battle. So you can't outrun your fork. Um <laughs> I, I know many people try, but uh, you're much better off making healthier decisions with how you eat and, and um, what your relationship is with food. You know, at Nerd Fitness, we deal with a lot of people that have very um, emotional challenges when it comes to when it comes to eating, and, and because it's not something that you're, you know, it's it's something you have to do. So how do you how do you break this habit that's mm -hmm. so negative with something that you literally have to do in order to survive uh, is a challenge. So diet is 80 to 90% of the battle. Uh, next, you have to do things that you enjoy. Um, like for people that are like, well, I don't like going to the gym. Like, okay, cool. Then don't go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Like, just don't do that. They're like, that's not what I expected you to say. I'm like, <laughs> if you're not enjoying it, yeah. then you're not, then it's going to be very tough for you to want to stick with it. So we encourage people to pick, you know, if somebody says to me, I don't like exercise, what they're really saying is I have not found the particular type of exercise that yeah. I enjoy yet. Mm -hmm. It can be running, it can be strength training, it can be gymnastics, capoeira, breakdance fighting, it can be Brazilian jiu jitsu, uh, live action role playing, ultimate frisbee, hiking, walking. Um, I heard of a trampoline class the other day. That sounds pretty trampoline fun. class. Yeah. Great, <laughs> love it. Whatever it is, find a way to do that as often as yoga, um, tai chi, ballroom dancing, swing dancing, whatever it is. Like there's a bazillion different ways to get in shape. So pick the thing. And I'm assuming if you're listening to a runner's podcast, running is probably something that you enjoy. <laughs> Amazing. Do it and do it as often as you can. Uh, and then finally, we we believe that a, a strong body is a healthy body. So in some capacity, mixing in some strength training uh, into your routine, it can be something simple with you know bodyweight squats, pushups, lunges. Uh, uh, a, a friend of mine, Jason Fitzgerald, who runs yep. strengthrunning.com, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure many people listening are familiar with this as well. Yep. Uh, I, I know he's, you know, he's a big, he's a big fan of this too. Building strength in your muscles outside of just running can be really powerful for injury prevention, mm -hmm. uh, really building up core strength and, and setting you up to succeed with everyday life kind of functional activities outside of just, uh, outside of just running. So, um, I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan personally of, of strength training and my strength training tends to revolve around uh, gymnastic rings for my upper body and uh, old school barbell oh, training cool. for my lower body. So it's a, it's kind of a funky mix and then uh, lots of hiking and walking and and uh, exploring and, and you know, jumping into soccer games or pick up basketball games, uh, things things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Just making it fun. And, and that's great. Absolutely. And I, I'm glad you did mention strength training because we also, we, I mean, Jason, we've worked with a few times on different things and uh, we're huge fans of strength training. And uh, we do have a strength training course, which I'll put a link to in the show notes, but um, that is just so important. And then you did mention yoga as well, I think. Um, and you have, I noticed you had some yoga videos on your page um so can you kind of explain why you decided to create this um you kind of allow people to do it from their own homes rather than going to a studio sure i, I just uh, i knew this is probably three or four years ago now going to a yoga studio for the first time for me and this is after already running nerd fitness for three or four years and mm -hmm. and you know in relatively good shape 
I was terrified of walking into that <laughs> yoga studio. I'm like, oh, geez, what if I, what if I fall on my face? What if I do this? What if uh, I split my pants open when I'm doing this move? Whatever it is, like all these things went through my head. Eventually, I got over it, but I just know how debilitating that uh, mm. anxiety can be for many mm -hmm. people. Just like going to a gym and strength training. So, you know, there's a lot of resources under fitness that you can do in the comfort of your own home. You know, body weight workouts that you can follow along with at home. Uh, and so I, I've seen the benefits of yoga personally, and I think strength training, although helpful, if if you if you're not mobile, then you're not. It's it's almost like uh, you're driving a Ferrari, but you're stuck in the you're stuck going fifty miles an hour, and it's like, man, you want to you want to see mm -hmm. how fast this thing can go. That's like if you're just strength training, but you never stretch or never work on mobility. The, your muscles never get that full range of motion. Mm -hmm. Your body never truly recovers. Uh, and I've just seen how important yoga can be for that. And it's something I just, I enjoy. So mm -hmm. uh, we have what's called nerd fitness yoga that, you know, it's a uh, video courses that or a video online, online course with a downloadable streamable videos that you can uh, watch from home. But it's me, uh, another woman from Team Nerd Fitness, and then our good friend Kate, who is a uh, certified yoga instructor and has been teaching for years. And it's the three of us on this set inspired by Super Mario. Mm -hmm. And it's I, I like to think it's the most approachable yoga experience people could have because it's, you know, we're trying... It, Every exercise, we're showing different versions of each of the movements to show like, oh, if you can't do this one, scale down to this. If you can't do that, scale down to this. And like in some parts of the video, like on the advanced stuff, like I'll like, I literally like fall over at one point. It's like, hey, that's okay. Like these things happen and you have to understand like it's, you have to kind of go through those moments of sucking at something until you get a little bit less sucky at it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think yoga is a really good example for that and a way for people. And we've had, you know, thousands of people pick it up, which has been pretty cool yeah. to, uh, to go through it and, and become more flexible and limber and, and uh, less injury prone too. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's great. And I, I definitely encourage runners to go check that out because um, I can definitely say, uh, you know, on behalf of us that most of us are pretty stiff and uh, you know, I've had negative experiences with yoga going and you know, the person next to you is like twisted in a pretzel and you can barely Tristan touch so in their in their Lululemon pants and <laughs> yeah. and, and like they're all dolled up or or you know and you're like hi. I can't even move like, what, yeah, yeah. what am I doing here? You know, like you try to like hide in the corner. Like I've been that person. So yeah. I, uh, I totally understand. Yeah. So that I definitely would recommend going to check those out. And I'll, again, I'll put a link to those in the show notes. And then uh, one thing we haven't talked about, which you've mentioned a few times yet is, uh, you know, the diet aspect. And, uh, you know, you are mostly, uh, for the most part, paleo. And um, I've actually been making some changes myself. I've been working with Tawny Prezak um, and I'll put a link to the show notes to the episode with her. Um, and, you know, I've been making a lot of changes with eating more animal meat and um, just really focusing on diet, getting the good foods in. And I can't believe the difference I've seen in, you know, such a short amount of time. So um, what is it about like the paleo kind of style food that you kind of like eating? Sure. Well, so I put on an article, I want to say maybe two months ago called like in defense of the paleo ish mm -hmm. diet. Um, it's funny. One of my like one of my friends in this online space who I'm sure you're familiar with as well, but Matt Fraser at No Meat Athlete, yep. like I am like a gymnastics powerlifting paleo guy and he is a, you know, vegan marathon runner. And yeah. yet like we I, like I love the guy. Like we we mm -hmm. get along really well. We've hung out together, like we've closed bars down together at conferences <laughs> and and uh and you know the philosophies are actually very similar. It's like eat real food eat like a lot of vegetables. Um, the thing that differs is your, your protein source. Um, so I think I don't, I don't necessarily prescribe to like the, the zealots of like paleo dogma of like, Oh, uh, a caveman would only eat mm -hmm. these 10 things. And if you eat anything other than that, you're an idiot and <laughs> your opinion is irrelevant, whatever. And like, I think the paleo diet, essentially it's you saying like, Hey, did this exist 10,000 years ago? And it, it, you know, is this something that is, is, natural. Like how many steps between that thing existing and you eating it, the fewer steps, the healthier it's probably going to be. You mean you. a Twinkie wasn't around and came no, down? Well, <laughs> what's funny is I think if you put a Twinkie out now, 10,000 years from now, that Twinkie would probably still look like that. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's filled with so many uh, preservatives and <laughs> processed whatever. So it's, it's really, I, I like to think of the paleo diet as a 
a really simple mental model for people to follow to reevaluate their relationship with food. Mm -hmm. Eat real stuff, eat more vegetables than you probably are eating at the moment, cut out processed stuff and keep it, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And if what you're doing is working for you, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But if it's not working for you, then it might be time to cut out some of those things or significantly decrease your consumption of, of certain things. So uh, yeah, we are big fans of the paleo diet. If you Google nerd fitness, um, paleo, or I think if you just Google paleo diet, like we show it pretty close to the top, but yeah, it's I'll put a, link as beginner's, well. a beginner's guide to the paleo diet, which is full of Lego caveman photos and, um, really corny references that I, I pepper throughout <laughs> the article. So, uh, it's, it's something I think that people should read, uh, not necessarily dismiss outhand or, or you know, dismiss right away or go all in on and, and freak out about like, oh my God, I ate a potato instead of a sweet potato. What happens now? <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be okay. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's eat, eat real food. Don't be a, don't be a jerk and, uh, or don't be an idiot really. I think in, in what your food choices are and, uh, eat for the, the goal that you're looking to succeed at. You know, if you're trying to get to 5% body fat as a bodybuilder, it's going to be way different than, hey, I'm looking to run a marathon in X amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not drastically, but it's going to be different. So it's like, okay, eat for your goals and and really think about what that relationship you have with food is and and then make teeny adjustments over long periods of time. Don't do diets. We don't do cleanses. We don't do any of that nonsense. We want small, consistent, permanent changes that adjust your relationship with food. Yep. Great. That's a great summary and that uh, really makes it clear there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just before we begin the final kick round, I just want to take a moment to thank our sponsor. Depending on where you are in the world, summer or winter is coming. We only have a few precious weeks of this ideal running weather before the mental battles begin. Music or podcasts can make those long training days much easier, and I love to listen to 90s music to get me through the really tough parts. Jabra Pulse is the wireless sports earbud that was designed with runners in mind. Yes, that means no slipping out of your ear on those hot summer days, especially with the customizable in-ear pieces. It even has an accurate in-ear heart rate monitor, so you can use that to make sure those easy days stay easy. Yeah, just like you promised. I love mine, and I've run with musical podcasts more in these past few months than I have in the rest of my life combined. That is how great these are. Runners Connect listeners can get exclusive offers and enter to win a free Jabra Pulse headset by signing up at jabra.com forward slash runners connect. That's J A B R A dot com forward slash runners connect to start your journey or buy the Jabra Pulse at your local Best Buy. Jabra, this is where it starts. Okay, and just for the final kick, I have five questions for you, which I've modified just a little bit because you are um, not the usual uh, runner obsessed person that we have on the podcast. But uh, first, if we could, if I could begin with the greatest advice you've ever received, I know that's a loaded question, but Ooh. if you have some kind of <laughs> greatest advice I've ever received, um, I get most of my advice from books. Like mm -hmm. I read probably uh, at least one, maybe two books per week. Wow. Um, and it wasn't in a book, but it was in a, uh, I put it, I put it in my book actually, because I just thought it was so profound, but somebody was asking about uh, how do I get more motivated to, to play more music? And the response that this guy came back with was, you know, in far less politically correct terms, it was screw motivation, cultivate discipline. <laughs> And I've really taken those four words to, to heart. Uh, yes, that first word was not screw. It actually begins with an F. And I felt like that would not be appropriate to share with you. But when I read it, when I read it that way, I was like, yeah. oh man, this is pretty powerful. And it's it's really changed a lot of what I've done, yeah. how I've done it, and makes me think about how important the discipline aspect of what we do and how we do it is is has become in my life. Mm -hmm. I love that. And yeah, you've definitely made that clear throughout the interview of how, you know, that's kind of shaped things. Okay. Uh, well, you this is going to be a tough one for you then. Greatest blog or book other than your own? <laughs> this uh... Man, you know, I blog, I would say like I read one of the few people that I read consistently would be um, James, James Clear. It's, okay. I think it's jamesclear.com. He's a, he's a friend of mine and he just writes some of the most well-researched, thoughtful, interesting articles I've ever seen. And he, mm -hmm. he's consistent, he's changed 
my writing style, I think for the better, I've just been like subconsciously influenced by what he's done and how he's done it. I'm like, damn, dude, you're like, I'll like shoot him a text. <laughs> and I'm like, man, today, that was really, really, really good. Um, he's amazing. Ramit Sethi, who runs, yeah. I will teach you to be rich.com just consistently puts out really top quality content. And, uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, uh, that book specifically changed my life. I, yeah. I bought it and I bought nerdfitness.com uh, two weeks later because wow. of that book. So cool. it's, uh, that book, fundamentally changed the path that my life was on, which is really what kind of inspired me to write my book. I hope my book can have a similar result on somebody. Have you ever spoken to Tim to tell him that? Uh, I did. And oh. like, I, I, I interviewed him at one point oh, for, cool. for Nerd Fitness. And like, I was so nervous. I was like, hey man, <laughs> just heads up. Like the only reason this inter- this this uh, this interview exists or this, the reason my website exists is is you know, as a result of your book. So thank you. And he's like, no, oh, thanks, man. He couldn't have been, he could have been nicer. So oh, it was, it was cool. a pretty cool experience. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Uh, what would you tell a new, well, usually it's runner, but someone who's just beginning to exercise for the first time? Uh, pick a very small specific goal and do it every single day. So if you're get, if you want to become a runner, go for a five minute run every morning, but make the motion of putting on your shoes, stepping out of your door and going on, going through that motion. Mm-hmm. Great. Perfect. And you actually already mentioned that. So I actually should have asked you it earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, favorite pre-workout meal. So maybe something you have every time or a favorite one. Sure. Um, you know, I, funnily enough, I'm a big fan of, uh, intermittent fasting as well. Hmm. So actually I train when I train, I train in a fasted state. So I, my first meal actually comes after, <laughs> after I work out. I understand if you're going to go on a long run, mm-hmm. uh, that might not necessarily line up with, with your goals, depending on how long you're running for. So, uh, as far as like healthy snacks go, give me apple slices and almond butter and I'm in heaven. Like that's my, <laughs> that's my favorite thing. That is a good combo, but I would definitely not recommend that before a run as that rips your stomach apart. And uh, <laughs> trust me, I know, but <laughs> yes, afterwards, absolutely for sure. Okay, and finally, your favorite fitness product? Um, I love the, I think, Zombies Run. The the mm-hmm. app is just so nerdy and <laughs> such, a, such a fun experience to make you realize like you're not... It's it's a cool way to get you to do uh, interval training, really. Yeah. Um, it, so if anybody that's listening uh, is likes, enjoys the show, The Walking Dead, or um, Nerdy Pursuits, and also loves to run, check out the Zombies Run app. I think it's great. (laughs) Okay, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Okay, Steve, well, uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it, and I know everyone would have got a lot out of this. And, uh, yeah, well, we'll encourage everyone to go pick up the book and see for yourself. Great, and then, yeah, just hit me up. I'm on um, Twitter and Instagram, at Steve Cam, and Mm -hmm. hanging out uh, at nerdfitness.com. So come say hey. Great, thank you. Don't you just love Steve's attitude towards life and fitness? He makes things seem so achievable in his theories. Well, they make sense, right? We can all level up our life, and it's surprising just how much of our lives we can compare to video games. I really encourage you to go check out the Nerd Fitness website and create your own character. I had a lot of fun doing it, and, you know, us runners were kind of nerdy, so I have a feeling that you probably will too. There will be a link in the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash rc107. I do apologize in the interview, I did say 106, but if you didn't already notice, I actually already gave that one out to my interview with Stephanie Howe, so the show notes for this week are actually at 107. So remember, if you do buy the book, to take a picture holding it up and send it to Steve because he'll love it. So next week, we're going to be talking to my strength coach, Drew Watts, and he shares what we do in the gym to make me so strong and how we prevent injuries. Now, I'm always a little bit hesitant to do those kind of episodes that are just focused on me and my training, but I think you're also going to get a lot out of it for yourself. And he will give you so much helpful information of how you can add strength training to your plan, whether you're a first time person using strength training or whether you've been using it for years. So until then, have a great week.